Good morning, I'm Chris Flanagan. Breaking news of our continuing coverage of the escape and capture of Chardon school shooter T.J. Lane. Jackson County Sheriff's officials right now holding a news uh, conference. From their own there and listen in. How they were notified and uh, details. You want to move on down just a little bit there. Uh, some of the people that are behind me, uh, four of which are going to be speaking. Superintendent, the principal here from Chardon High School. Chief Deputy Scott Hildebrand from the Sheriff's Office and Chief of Police here in Chardon, uh, Scott Neas. They're going to be speaking. We also have the County Prosecutor here, Jim Plays, who came out tonight, Lieutenant Gary Gribbins from the Sheriff's Office, he's in charge of Law Enforcement Division, and members of the school board and some of the staff here. Um, that being said, uh, I'm going to go right into having Chief Scott Neas give you his perspective of what happened. Good evening, Scott Neas, Sheridan Police Department, uh, NID HUS. Sheridan Police Department was alerted that TJ Lane and two other inmates had escaped from the Allen Correctional Facility in Lima, Ohio uh, last evening. I can now confirm that we've heard from officials involved in this search that TJ Lane is now in custody. Uh, we have spoken with the warden directly as well as the uh, Peter Elliott, the U.S. Marshal assigned to this area. A manhunt had been initiated in Lima, and the Chardon Police Department was immediately contacted by representatives of state, local, and federal law enforcement officials offering their manpower, resources, and support to us in order to ensure that our community remained uh, safe throughout this event. I was uh, immediately in contact with Dr. Hanlon and his staff, key members of his staff, uh, to ensure the ongoing safety of our schools. The Chardon Police Department will continue to demonstrate a visible presence in our schools and support the students, teachers, and staff as they prepare to return to school on Monday. Um, I'm going to pass my uh, comments now on to Chief Deputy Scott Hildebrand. Chief Deputy Scott Hildenbrand, H-I-L-D-E-N-B-R-A-N-D. <clears throat> Our office was notified by the, the Allen Oakwood Correctional uh, Institution of the escape of three inmates, one being T.J. Lane. We immediately contacted the victims, families of the Chardon school shooting, school officials, and other local law enforcement. We quickly worked closely with the state, federal, and local law enforcement to ensure the safety of our county residents. We closely monitored the search efforts via radio. We were able to monitor that right from here. And we are very happy with the outcome, the apprehension of T.J. Lane, and want to thank all involved for the continued close working relationship that we all enjoy in this county. Michael Hanlon, Superintendent of Schools. Thank you all for being here this morning. Certainly the events of Thursday evening had a profound and very deep impact on our entire school community as evidenced by the immediate reactions here in the city of Chardon and on social media. On behalf of our Board of Education represented here this morning and our entire school community, I wish to extend our sincere appreciation to all levels of law enforcement across the state of Ohio for swift action, strong communication, and our school district and providing our school district with a positive outcome related to the events of Thursday evening. First and foremost, our thoughts and prayers go out today to the families of Demetrius, Russell, and Danny, and all others affected by the tragedy, as well as by the troubling events of Thursday evening. The last several hours have certainly been very difficult as we come to grips with these developments. Throughout Thursday evening and Friday morning, Chardon local school district officials remained in contact with local law enforcement, the governor's office, and the Ohio Department of Education to closely monitor the developments of this situation. That working relationship has been instrumental in guiding, guiding our response to this situation. The safety and well-being of our students, staff, and community remain the highest priorities in our school district. While the individual is now back in custody, there has certainly been an undeniable, profound, and deep impact on our entire community. I want to ensure that students and staff have the opportunity to seek out the support that we all need at this time to aid in the healing process. 
All schools in the Chardon Local School District will be closed on Friday, September 12, 2014, in order that our students, staff, and community will have the opportunity to seek out the assistance that will be of most help to them. The school district will also provide as much social and emotional support for students, staff, and community as possible during this emotional time. Therefore, the Chardon High School and Chardon Middle School buildings will be open Friday with counseling and other support services available in each school building. Those seeking assistance or just simply wanting to talk are encouraged to come to either building tomorrow. Chardon High School principal Andy Fetchick will provide the details concerning these support services that will be available. Having now served as superintendent of schools for one year, it has quickly become apparent to me that Chardon remains a strong and resilient community that has rallied around each other before, and I'm confident that we will continue to do so now and into the future. Good morning. My name is Andy Fetchick. I'm the high school principal at Chardon High School, F-E-T-C-H-I-K. Um, again, I would like to reiterate our thanks on behalf of the high school to law enforcement for their quick and uh, speedy resolution to the situation. Tomorrow, as Dr. Hanlon said, there will not be uh, academic classes at the high school. However, we will be open for the community and students uh, from 10 o'clock to 3 o'clock at the high school and the middle school to provide support and, and any counseling that our students may need. Um, the doors will be open. Students are welcome to come in, and, and we encourage all students and staff, anyone that wants to reach out and talk. I'd also like to thank the community, um, the, the outpouring of support this, from social media and just phone calls has been, has been tremendous. Um, as we work through this together, I know, that, uh, I know that things will get better as they have before and will continue to be sharp and strong. Thank you. That concludes what we're going to be discussing this evening. Um, more details, um, should they be needed, you might want to contact the, the people at the prison. I mean, you have everything we have at this time. Um, with that, I want to thank you personally for coming out in the middle of the night and showing us just how uh, involved you are with Geauga County. Thank you. That concludes. And you've just been watching a news conference there in Chardon with the Geauga County officials uh, uh, from the county and also from the school district and the uh, police chief there in uh, Chardon. So again, to recap, uh, no classes district-wide for Chardon tomorrow. All classes, all schools are closed. Uh, but the high school and middle school will be open tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, again, for counseling and support, they're encouraging anyone who wants to go in and just talk uh, to come in. They'll have counselors on hand for support. Uh, so again, no classes uh, district-wide for Chardon, but the high school and middle school will be open from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., uh, offering support and counseling. Um, well, the very latest uh, on Good Morning Cleveland beginning at 4.30 a.m. from Chardon. We'll also uh, check in uh, from Lima, where T.J. Lane was captured about 1.20 this morning after escaping Thursday night about 7.40 from the uh, prison there out in western Ohio. Uh, keep up the speed with us on Twitter and Facebook and also on our website, newsnet5.com. I'm Chris Flanagan, now back to regular scheduled programming.